Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. After making a one foot by one foot by five foot closed box from a four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood, how much wood is left? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you can figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, let's go ahead and take one more look at this question before I show you the answer. And I just want to make sure all of you understand what's going on here, because you may not have heard of some of these terms. So what we want to do here is we want to make a one foot by one foot by five foot closed box okay so we don't know what a closed box is that means you know it's going to have uh two uh all sides tops bottoms and ends right it's not going to be open like a shoe box you know with its lid off or something like this is a completely closed box and we're going to be making this uh from this four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood so four by eight uh, in terms of feet, uh, that's a pretty common way to buy plywood, probably the most common way. So it's a sheet of plywood like this. So we're going to uh, make our lovely little box uh, from this sheet of plywood. And then after we make this box, how much material is left? Okay, so that is the question. And let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is 10 square feet. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars so you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of calculating surface area of a rectangular cube. Now, if you tell your friends and family that, they'll be like, uh, that's very impressive, but uh, really, I'm not that interested. Leave me alone. I want to get back to my Netflix. But uh, in all seriousness, if you got this right, that is fantastic. And if you didn't get this right, well, don't despair. Uh, this is not that difficult. You'll be looking like this person in a few minutes. Okay, so let's go and get into this problem. And first things first, first, we have a math word problem. So you always want to use the rule of three which is don't do anything until you read the problem at least three times, even though you understand uh, the problem by reading it the first time, right? And I like to emphasize this because so many people get excited about a math problem. They'll be like, oh, I understand what to do. I can do this problem. I'm going to get an A on my test, and then they'll run off in this direction. They'll do a bunch of stuff, and then they'll, you know, might get a little bit lost. You know, they're like, yeah, did I do this right? And then when it ends up happening, they'll go back to the problem, and they go, oh, I missed something. And then they'll go in this direction. And when you do this, uh, you're going to be taking a lot more time to do a problem, and it's easy to kind of, you know, um, you know, make mistakes, and it's just not a good uh, kind of approach to doing a problem. You just don't want to do read something once. Let your brain kick in and make sure you understand the problem. Now, for those of you that are math students out there, if you don't understand any aspect of a problem, you know what you should do? Well, if you said raise your hand, you're absolutely correct, right? Ask. Okay, and if your teacher doesn't tell you the answer, that's okay too, but always ask, even if your teacher says no. In other words, try to get information from your teacher. Believe me, I am a teacher, and uh, it all depends on how your teacher is feeling. If they're in a good mood, if they had their cup of coffee in the morning, they very well might you know, give you more information than they probably should about a problem. But if you don't understand the problem, you're not gonna understand the solution. Okay, now once you really got a good grasp on the problem, what you wanna do is model the problem. And if you can visualize the problem, well, that's always kind of the best um, setup to solve a math problem, is if you can see the problem, oftentimes you will be able to uh, see the solution um, easier, okay? So in this particular case, obviously we can construct a little lovely diagram of the situation. Okay, so we have to uh, make this one foot by one foot by five foot closed box from this amount of plywood. 
and uh, we need to calculate how much wood is left. So let's go ahead and take a look at the situation. So here is our lovely closed box, right? So here we're going to have this side, right? This one, uh, one by one by five means that, okay, the length, the, the width, the, uh, the length, and the height, however you want to look at it, it's going to be a one by one by five. So this is uh, the kind of the, the setup, right? And even if you were confused here, you can't get these dimensions hopefully too wrong. So we have one by one. So we have a, you know, a square, right? And we have our ends here are going to be squares. And then we have one by five. We've got to be real careful here about, you know, if you don't have to be the perfect artist here, but you have to have in geometry and in math, you have to have some basic um, uh, kind of uh, drawing skills, right? You don't, again, you don't have to be perfect, but you know, if you can kind of somewhat sketch 3D figures, that's going to be very helpful. And even if you're terrible at it, if it's somewhat, you know, understandable, it's going to be really important. So if your box is like this, you know, and you're like, oh, there is my 3D box, you know what? All right, well, that's fine. Just try to improve on, you know, uh, your, um, your, your artwork, if you will. Again, you don't have to be a perfect artist, but, you know, take your time and try to have an accurate um, representation of the situation. All right, so here's our one by one. So we have this side and this side, and then we have this length here is one foot. So it's one foot right here, and then this is five feet. So we have these sides right here, and then of course we have tops and bottoms. So we have how many sides here? Well, we have six sides that we need to kind of cut out of this plywood. Okay, so here is our lovely sheet of plywood, something that you would pick up at the hardware store like Home Depot or Lowe's. So it's a four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood. And it's basically just like this. It's a rectangle. So we have to cut out our little pieces here, right? I mean, we are dealing with wood, so it's not like paper. We can kind of fold this in. So we're going to have to kind of uh, cut out uh, the respective pieces. But that's not really the issue here in terms of cutting out the you know respective pieces. What we want to do is figure out, well, how much wood is all this project going to take, okay? And how much wood do we have here? Well, this is a four by eight uh, sheet of plywood, but really uh, we want to not be thinking in terms of, uh, you know, uh, dimensions in terms of length and width. We want to think in terms of dimension of surface area, okay? So we want to consider the surface area of each of these um, uh, two uh, things, right? So we have the plywood, What's the surface area? Well, the surface area is the coverage area, okay? So it's almost like how much carpet would you need to, you know, uh, you know, cover a sheet of plywood, a four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood, or if you wanted to, you know, for example, maybe, you know, wrap one side of this sheet of plywood, that amount of material we like to measure in terms of surface area, okay? So we're gonna uh, want to calculate the surface area for this plywood, and then obviously we're gonna have to calculate the surface area for this um, uh, closed box, right? So just in general terms, how do we calculate the surface area of this closed box? Well, we're gonna have to get the area of this side and this side, and then this side and this side, and then the tops and the bottoms, and we're gonna have to add all these up. And then of course, we're gonna have to see we're going to have to see how much uh, total um, surface area this is, and we're going to have to subtract it away from our plywood. The difference is going to be how much uh, remains, after, how much plywood remains after doing this project. Okay, so that is the general setup. And if you understand, you're like, okay, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I get what to do. Well, now what we have to figure out is uh, the surface area again of these respective. Um, you know, the, the box and the plywood. So let's start off with the plywood because that's nice and simple. So how do you find the surface area? Well, the surface area is effectively uh, for this plywood here is literally just the area of the plywood as well, okay? Because we're only talking about two dimensions. We're not talking about three dimensions, but I'll just use the term surface area. So to find the area or surface area of the plywood, it's literally just the length times the width, okay? And again, we have to be very mindful here because we are dealing with the units of measure of feet, okay? So if we write this, as a matter of fact, let me change this this way so we can see the math a little bit clearer. So if this is four feet right here, and this is eight feet, so the length times the width is the surface area. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate that. So it's eight feet times four feet, but we're multiplying feet times feet. So eight feet times four feet. 
Now, of course, 8 times uh, 4 is 32, but feet times feet is feet squared, okay? So when we're talking about area or surface area, it's always units of measure squared uh, because obviously you're multiplying the same units of measure. You know, if we're dealing with centimeters times centimeters, we'd end up with centimeters squared. So make sure you have the proper units of measure. Okay, so that's how much uh, surface area we have in this plywood. So this four by eight sheet of plywood has 32 uh, square feet. Okay, so now the fun part of this problem is figuring out the surface area of our little box. But before we do that, I'm going to ask you to hit that subscribe button. I definitely need your help. Uh, I'm making this video in uh, 2024. Matter of fact, the beginning of 2024. And uh, with that being said, I want to wish all of you out there a happy new year. I hope you've uh, kind of wrote out some big goals for yourself, whatever they might be in whatever areas of your life whether it's health, education, whatever. But, you know, uh, we all should have some sort of goals. My goal is to reach as many people as I possibly can this year. Last year was a pretty good year for me. I think I got like 34 million new views on my channel, which is mind-boggling. When I think of it, I'm just like, I just can't believe it. My, um, oh, that's a terrible picture of me. I don't look that way. But I'm trying to look excited uh, let me see here. Of course, I just love uh, doing my little stick figures and whatnot. It's a fun part of, of doing my YouTube videos. But, you know, I had no idea that I was going to reach that many people, but I'm happy I did. Hopefully, a lot of people got something out of my uh, content. But this year, I'm going to try to reach at least the same amount, if not more. So that's my personal goal. But really, my goal is to help people learn mathematics. I am passionate about that, but I can't get work. I can't help as many people as I possibly can without getting your support. And the best way you can support this channel is to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, might as well hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's get into calculating the surface area of this lovely little box. All right, so again, this is a closed box, right? So there's not going to be anything open you know, like a, uh, let's say you took a shoe box right here and you removed the lid. So let's say the top would be open. That's not our case. So all sides here are going to be closed. All right. So again, we have a one by one by five. So we have these ends right here. Okay. Which have what dimension? Well, they're one by one. And then we have the sides here, right? And the sides are what? Well, if this is one foot, this is one foot right here. Uh, this is a rectangular box, so this is a 1 by 5 right here, and this is a 1 by 5 right there. So we have two sides at uh, 1 by 5, and then we have the tops and bottoms. So what is the top and bottom? Well, the tops and bottoms are also 1 by 5s right there. So 1 by 5 right here, and then 1 by 5 right there. So that's why you really want to, you know, uh, draw, you know, as best as you can a sketch of uh, the situation and hopefully all of you, you know, figured this out. But again, you know, basic art, you know, drawing skills, you know, it really does go a long way uh, when you do algebra and math and geometry problems. And again, you don't have to be a perfect artist, but try to be as neat as possible. Okay, so that's the situation. So we're going to need six pieces here to uh, put this box together. And what we need to do is figure out the area of each individual uh, piece. And then we'll add all this up and we'll get the total surface area required to build this lovely box. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, so here is our box, and we don't have to be redundant here. Uh, we have a one by one right here and a, another one by one right here, so that we have two one by ones, right? So now we're calculating the area, and these will be our ends. So we'll just have this one by one, that'll be the area here, which is obviously one, and we have two of them, so two times that, this will um, account for our ends. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our tops and bottoms. So our tops and bottoms right here are going to be what? Well, they're going to be one by fives. Okay, so uh, how many tops and bottoms? Well, we have one top and one bottom, so we have two one by fives. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our sides. Well, the sides are what? Well, this is also one by five. We have two of these sides right here. So here is all the material we need. Uh, to build this um, uh, lovely box, okay? So this is going to be our total surface area. And now what we, uh, we want to do is actually calculate this out. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. This is not difficult math. So two times one times one is what? Well, remember uh, the order of operations. We've got to do everything inside of the parentheses. So two times one is what? Well, that is two. And now we have one times five is five. Five times two, of course, is 10. Or two times five is 10. And then here we have two times five, again, is 10. So 10 plus 10 is 20 plus two is 22. But what does this represent? Well, we're talking about square footage here, right? We're talking about the surface area. So the surface area of this lovely box is 22 square feet. All right, so now it's going to be super easy to answer this question. And remember, the question was what? How much wood is going to uh, uh, you know, be left over uh, from building this box from this sheet of plywood? Well, how much uh, you know, wood is required to build this box? Well, the best way to describe this is in square footage. We're going to need 22 square feet, and we're going to have to take it from this sheet of plywood, which is 32 square feet. So uh, uh, 22 minus the 32 is what? Well, let's go ahead and uh, see here. 32 minus 22, of course, is the difference. That is 10 square feet. All right, so hopefully this wasn't that difficult of a problem. Uh, again, you know, uh, just to kind of get back to, um, you know, sketching, you know, uh, you know, being somewhat artistic <laughs> in math, it's very, very helpful. And you don't, again, don't have to be a perfect artist, but you need to uh, try to um, work on improving, you know, your basic art skills, especially when it comes to, let's say, things in algebra. Let me just kind of erase this here real quick. Uh, neatness counts, right? So if you're like, let's suppose you're trying to graph a line and, you know, you want to just kind of draw a little X, Y axis. If you're like real quick and sloppy, you know, if you're like, all right, here's an X and Y, here's X and here's Y and here's my line. Yes, I have seen tens of thousands of, you know, problems done this way by students. And, you know, people wonder why they get things wrong. Now, the other extreme is people that are very neat, but that comes over time. Years and years ago, I'll just leave this with this little uh, memory of mine. I had a fantastic, well, I've had so many great uh, math teachers in my life. But I had this one particular math teacher. Um, boy, I tell you, her name was Miss Buibus. Uh, I'm saying that wrong. Miss Buibus, this is maybe 40 years ago. And it was just way before um, technology and everything else in terms of, uh, you know, um, computer technology and showing things. But anyways, I took a geometry class with her. And she was absolutely amazing. She would go to the chalkboard and she would just draw like just perfect circles and perfect triangles. I mean, by freehand. And it was just <laughs> so impressive. So, you know, I, you know, there's no way even myself I could strive to be as good as she was. But anyways, you know, there's going to be different levels of skill here. And if you practice, you know, your art skills, it will definitely help you out in mathematics. Okay, now if you need help with uh, surface area, area geometry, whatnot, uh, a couple quick re uh, recommendations. Uh, you can find links to all these courses in the description. Now, first of all, if you are a full geometry student, well, I have a full geometry course. I cover all surface area, area, you know, everything you need to know uh, in terms of geometry. A lot of there's a lot, of course, that goes into it. But what we're talking about here is basic geometry. I teach this stuff in my um, pre-algebra course. I have a full chapter on uh, basic area, surface area, and volume of basic figures. Uh, so these are some courses that you can check out. Now, if you're not a math student and you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I just like your videos because I just, you know, like, you know, math. Well, maybe you want to rebuild your math skills. And if that's the case, check out my math skills rebuilder course. In this course, I teach you basic math, algebra, uh, uh, geometry, even some basic trigonometry and some basic probability and statistics. So these are some course options for those of you out there that really need to know your stuff. But I also have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel on all this material. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.